Uh, hi guys, so I'm going to do another request. I'm going to read um, Joe Palooka. So this is a very, very, this is almost a hundred year old comic. This is a request I had. So this is the oldest comic I read. It came out in 1930. Or, or these are comic strips. So obviously, obviously I can't read the full thing, but especially because... There's, I stopped at a certain point with the images because there's a really um, racist stuff and I don't want my video getting taken down. It's very racist, so I, I didn't want to. I, I did. I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to download it because I don't want my video getting taken down. But um, Joe Palooka, the big cloak and suit man, advertises by Ham Fisher. So apparently he's like some sort of boxer. It's like a comedy comic strip. Nobody, Nobby Walsh finds business rushing so that he need, must needs have an assistant. Having never been a spendthrift, he has done all the work himself, but will read on for yourself. Come on, show me some snappy ties, Snappy. Me gosh, and the gang waiting for me to play Pawn Pino Chip. Have you got this lid on uh, five? I can't read it. Five and an eighth? Or haven't you? Charles B. Moopo, when I say you're going to wear a pinchback, I mean what I say. Now shut up. Now in the ad say, assistant manager wanted. Must wait on trade, act as porter, wrap, deliver packages, keep books, wash the windows, and, um, but he's only 40 years older than she is, and besides, he's worth a million? Okay, so like a gold digger? Okay. Classified ads bring results, so the you know, classifieds when, uh, so salary two dollars a week, yeah. <laughs> and could you get the words "experience not necessary" in? What a philanthropist! What a philanthropist! What a philanthropist! Um, our hero makes his appearance. Listen, shorts. I'm too busy to play Pinochet, but if somebody comes in answer to my ad, I can play every afternoon. Maybe I should have offered more money in the ad. Hello, I seen your ad and I'm here. I'm ready to go to work. I'm Joe Palooka. Oh my gosh, I could have saved a buck. Of course you realize that you'll have to do a lot of work. And two dollars a week is big pay. By the way, what's your present occupation? Oh boy, I get the job. Occupation? Why, you're uh, sure I'm an American. Why, my grandfather's a veterinary of the Civil War. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, okay, uh, dirty work at the joints. Hey, you guys, nobody Welsh, or Nobby Walsh, I, I keep on calling nobody. Nobby Walsh left the store alone with that sap palooka. Here's a chance for a swell the outfit for all of us free. Hey, about Hey, Bat, how about a chocolate soda? Or soda on me? Never mind that now. Listen, you spurts, follow me and you so I'll get a new truzo for nothing. Now you follow my instructions and everything will be Jake, see? With Jake? I guess there's very foreign slang words. Okay, pal. Joey, guys, thought we'd give you a little surprise by coming down to shop at your store, because we like you. Gee, that's swell. Help yourselves, fellas. Nobby went out and left Joe Palooka in charge of the store. All of the hustlers and Gip, uh, Gips, I don't know, and the town have taken advantage of that fact. Gee, won't Mr. Welsh be glad when he sees all the business I done? Hey, Spoke, uh, throw me five of them silk shorts. Just charge it, thanks, boys. 
Me gosh, what happened? The store is cleaned out. What was it, a cyclone? I sold everything. You say they all charged? Did you get their names, addresses? Ho oh, oh, ho, isn't that funny? I never thought of that. An economic crisis. So this is when the Great Depression was going on. This was like the first year of the Great Depression. Joe sold everything in the store on credit to a crang gang of crooks. Poor Nobby is ruined. Things look, uh, I guess, pretty tough. Very blue cloud. This is empty. Listen, you sap, go out to every joint in town and round up every snitch of clothes and don't come back without them. Gosh, I wonder what's wrong. But I gotta get those clothes back, by golly. I think you're swell, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so he's like, dun 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 dun. And in the meantime, oh dear, suppose he does find those gorillas. Maybe I'd get better get the police. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm ruined. Why did I hire such a sap? Sock and boot. Say, fellas, I'm awful sorry, but nope, Nobby says you gotta give the clothes back. Hey, one of you guys throw that sap out of here. Hey, stupid, forget the clothes and have a shot. Me gosh, how did that cyclone get in here? So long, fellas, thanks. Gee, I didn't want to hurt those fellas, but the boss said I had to uh, get these things back. Now I'll go into the pool room and get the rest of the stuff later. Did you guys ever get a swell outfit easier? Ha <laughs> Hello, fellas. This boy certainly has a devastating wallop. We sort of feel sorry for that mo this mob if they don't give him the clothes from Nobby's shop. Well, let's see tomorrow. Hans Fisher, so... Ruined. Oh. Um, yesterday, Palooka cleaned out a couple of tough joints and recovered a lot of clothes. He still has a pool room to wreck. Nobby says, you gotta give me those clothes back, and if you won't, I'll have to take them, that's all. By golly, I bet Nobby will be glad when I bring all this stuff to him. Hey, look, Mr. Walsh, I brought everything back. First, you gave me my stock away. Then you will go out and ruin it. Now I'm worse off than I was before. I'm completely ruined and it's all your fault. Holy smokes, I guess I'll quit. He not only spoiled the clothes for, they took from me, but he took them from lots of other people. And I'm responsible because he's my employee. Oh dear. Morbid thoughts? Smith's store pistols. He's going to kill him? More morbid thoughts. Man, you got an idea. He's gonna get a drink. Gee, that looks scary for a while. Nobby seems to have another idea about drowning his troubles, however. Help appears on the horizon. They told me that you could steer me, right? We want to la up some easy dough between fights, so I figured we could get a heap of it. In this town, I'm Doc. Why's the manager of? Quick, give me a lemon phosphate. What, dog? Wise? Oh, oh, yeah, this was when prohibition was happening, or in the United States prohibition was happening. So, yeah, I guess yeah, they couldn't drink alcohol. Well, they couldn't get drink alcohol. So I'm, I guess he went to like a speak. It was a speakeasy. I guess I guess that's where he went to. So what, Doc? Wise, manager of the. Um, heavyweight world champ of the world, him. Yeah, uh, that's right. Now here's the dope. The boxing laws of this state state say there must be a decision. Well, naturally, we ain't taking no chances with the title, so I want some gig sap. The champ won't ho hoist his hands on five hundred dollars. And if you can put me wise to this sap, there's a century in it for you, and the sap gets $500. Hey, please, Mr. Doc, I got the biggest sap in the world for you. So the whole town is talking. Hey, get this, uh, Jack Squat, the world's heavyweight champ, is coming to town. I'm going to give an exhibition about the stadium next week. Good gosh. 
they got a match with the big palooka that whipped all those tough guys. This ought to be a darb of a scrap. I'll have to see that. Ho ho, why the champ will kill him. Palooka's never even seen a glove. Maybe I'm wrong, but all the funny things I've heard, uh, ever heard, this beats them all. Exhibition bout. Jack Masquat, world heavyweight champion versus Joe Palooka, local heavyweight sensation. I'm laughing already. Joe, you're going to fight the heavyweight champion of the world and get $25 for doing it. And written up in the papers. And besides, it will help me to start in business again. Just think of it. $25. So I think that would be like 500 I'm not sure how much money that would be today. I guess five. Could be like one grand or something. I don't know. Gee, I'd, I'd like to do it for you, Mr. Walsh, but I never was mad at him. And he didn't uh, swipe your clothes. So why should I have to hurt him? Nope, I can't do him. He doesn't want to hurt the champ. Well, I'm a, pan I'm a pansy. A few boxing lessons. Now look, Joe... Lead with yourself, uh, or lead with your left. See, place it out like this, and it, you'll never learn, and don't it don't matter anyhow. So, Professor Bull Baloney, boxing lessons. Keeps you protected and never lets the other guy get set. See, smack. It's foolish to even try and and teach him. I guess it's no use. He doesn't want to fight, and he's never learned anyhow. You're right. Uh, oh, gee, maybe I heard him. He was only trying to do what he told me. Uh, misjudged. Now listen, Joe. You've got to punch this bag for the next hour. So while I go over to Schwartz's for some... Pana... Panicle? I don't know what that is. I want you to work out, understand? I'm too tired, Jan. Oh dear, I bet the sandbag weighs a ton. Uh, well, the lazy bum's sound asleep and the fight's two days away. Oh well, it don't matter anyway. We're supposed to lose. Um, the champ is interviewed. You see, boys, this is egg establishment matches keep me in condition. And between big fights and pictures, I pick up plenty for extra charge, extra change. Are you going to fight the frog this year, champ? How about Sharky? This guy Palooka just licked a mob of toughest gangsters in town, champ. But he never boxed in his life, so give us some fun before you knock him out. Listen, I'll play with him for a couple of rounds, give him the swellest exhibition of boxing you ever seen, and then knock him cold in the sixth round. As for taking a chance with the title, that's a joke. Okay, champ, swell. And what's more, uh, it'll make him a worse sap than he is now. That's me, just class, that's all. You tell him, champ. But he's just a kid, champ, and never seen a ring. Why don't you take it easy with him? The crowd like it, the crowd will like it better because he's popular as the deuce. And the knockout. Say, champ, this guy's as strong as a horse, and the decision law in this state puts the title at stake. Does it worry you any? Nah, why well, he's just a sap boy. Look at all the suckers buying the tickets. Hot, hot ziggity. After a couple more exhibitions, we'll lay off for a month and play the po ponies. Then a new movie for 50 grand and then take on to the contender for the title for, for a whopping big stake. Okay by me, Doc. Gee, I feel like uh, an executor sending that kid with the gorilla. I'm getting to like him. He's a sweet kid, but the sap, he cost me my business, oh gosh. 500 bucks is 500 bucks. He must have to take a beat in, that's all. Gee, the champ's a nasty guy. Well, Joe goes his unconscious way without a care in the world. He has no conception of the slaughter that is about to take place, in which he is to be the chief victim. Joe's up, are you bringing up the plan, no? Oh, piano. Yes, Mom. Um, about to face the music. The arena is crowded. All the fans and a lot of others are on hand. 
to see the champion of the world give an exhibition, and the victim is to be Palooka. Boing. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings together Jack Masquat, the world's heavyweight champion, and Joe Palooka. Local sensation, the bout will be ten rounds, and although an exhibition fight, the rules of the state boxing commission will govern the fight. A decision must be given between both men weighed at 195 pounds even. It'll all be over soon, Joe. Just fight him and you'll you get $25 for yourself. Well, I just realized he's ripping him off because, I mean, it's $500. So, like, half of that would be 25 So, yeah, he's ripping him off. Why, Jack will make mince meat out of him. Ready for the champ. How do you do? Nice day, ain't it? Uh, the referee brings them to the center for instructions. Watch this, Sap. Poor Joe, he doesn't know what's it all about. One, two, three jabs. How's that? The champ is shaking him all over the ring. I ought to make it short while why give these mugs a show at these uh, peaks or prices. Uh-oh, look out, Joe. See tomorrow, the knockout. The champ in his vicious way has been slamming Joe around the lot. Joe hasn't made any attempt to hit back. The bell saved Joe just in time. I feel like a criminal. If I don't need the 500 bucks so bad, oh dear, this poor kid won't fight because he's no reason and doesn't want to hurt the champ. Oh, I have it. Joe put, that's the guy that put the crooks up to stealing the clothes from the store. Joe, oh Joe, go get him. What? Yeah, I'll ruin the Argentine class. Uh, tell, says I. I don't know what that means. Bong. Crash. Eight, nine, ten, you're out. Yeah, wow, whoa. Now where's Sam clothing, you crook? The New World's Champ. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to announce the greatest upset in the history of the ring. According to the boxing laws of this state, a decision must be given. Therefore, with the greatest of pleasure, I introduce the conqueror of Jack Masquat and the new heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Palooka of this city. Uh, do, do we get the 500 bucks, Bertie? 500, man? Why, why, you'll not only get that, you'll make a million. Joe's champion of the world. Where am I? Uh, Joe, we're the world's champion. Gee, I guess you hit harder than anybody in the ring. Gosh, what a shot, what a sock. Um, Joe, you're a wonder. When I said you was a sap, I, you knew I was kidding, didn't you? The minute uh, I seen you, I says to myself, that guy will be a world champion, so I hired you. And I'm your manager, ain't you the lucky guy? Ho, ho, ho. Uh, how much... Uh, yeah, I might end the video here. Yeah, I'll end the video here. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you could like, comment, or subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank you. And I'll see you guys later.